everyone welcome back to this channel today in this video i'm going to model a rc beam in a finite element software abacus i'll be using two different approaches two dimensional and three dimensional approach and we will compare the results from these two different approaches also at the end i will uh, have a quick demonstration of failure modes in a beam with shear reinforcement and without shear reinforcement so for this video, I have taken an example of a beam from a paper of Vicchio and James. Uh, material properties, cross-section details, reinforcement properties, concrete properties, and experimental setup, everything is taken from the paper of Vicchio and James. And the title of this paper is Experimental and Analytical Re-examination of Classic Concrete Beam Test. In this paper, there are 12 different types of beam, so A3 is taken for this video. The cross-section details of A3 is listed in this table. Reinforcement properties, concrete properties are in table 4. So on my right, there is an experimental setup. So we will be following the same procedure in Abacus modeling. In Abacus, let's go 3D modeling first. Uh, to make the video short, I've already modeled. So I will just quickly go through the procedure of modeling. First, uh, first First step is to define part. In Abacus, the modeling is quite simple. We will simply follow each uh, step, part, property, assembly, step, interaction, load, mesh, and job. So in part section, we have already defined uh, concrete, the concrete as a 3D uh, solid homogeneous material and rebar as a wire and truss element. So this is concrete, so M10, which is a rebar, stirrup. So these are defined uh, as a wire truss type and steel plate, which is actually a steel plate at the support and at the loading plate. Once parts are defined, we will define property. In the property, uh, here we can see the property of concrete, which is elastic and for nonlinear uh, properties, we have defined concrete damage plasticity. Here, we have plasticity parameters defined already, compressive behavior, yield stress, inelastic strain, tensile behavior, which is yield stress, cracking stress, scratching strain, sorry, are defined. In elastic, Young's modulus and quotient ratio are defined, which is taken from the paper. For the rebars as well, Elastic property, Young's modulus, portions ratio, they are defined here. And for nonlinearity, we define it as a plastic, yield stress, and plastic strain. So once all properties are defined, we assemble our parts. Here, as we can see, uh, the concrete steel plates are here already. And also, we can see reinforcements are already here. So all parts are assembled in assembly step. Once everything is assembled, then the first step is the defined step where we define the uh, loading uh, procedure with a static and general. Here we made the nonlinear geometries of here and incrementation where loads are applied with uh, with uh, an increment size of 0.01, which is the minimum, and at maximum, it's 0.1. So here we define the minimum as 1 to the power minus 108, which is to avoid any uh, non-convergence issues. And other parameters, we just keep it default. So one step is defined, we define interaction. In interaction, uh, we basically define the contact properties between uh, concrete and reinforcement, concrete and uh, steel plates. So here, the coupling it is defined uh, to couple the, this uh, reference point with the loading plate. In this point, load is applied and that point is coupled in the loading uh, plate through the coupling type of interaction properties. So here we can see the point is coupled with this loading plate. In the embedment uh, type, here we can see the embedment embedded region, which is actually the reinforcements. 
and most recent which is concrete which is the pink color you can see or magenta type color after then we define tie loading tie type of loading uh, for the loading plate and concrete the red which is master surface is concrete and you can see here the magenta type which is uh, which is loading plate so the type of this uh, interaction is tie similarly for support plates as well we define in the similar manner where concrete is master surface and the supporting plates they are slab surface so once we define interaction we define the boundary condition here so our uh, load is applied in a displacement controlled manner where the maximum displacement is 80 millimeter in downward direction which is applied in this reference point and the uh, boundary condition of pin and roller are defined so in pin direction u1 u2 and u3 are restrained and in roller the vertical direction u2 is restrained once the uh, load is defined then we will mesh our structure for the uh, precise calculation once mesh is uh, done then we will simply create the job where we will submit our file to run so let's create a job file let, let it uh, let's give a name for this file vs83 continue okay and now we will submit our job so the file is now running now we will just wait till it get it's uh, completed the run is completed now we will see the results so we can see the deformation of our beam here uh, we can see how uh, the stress is distributed during its uh, loading we can simply see here also we can check the load deformation pattern so here we uh, select RF2 which is a vertical reaction and a vertical displacement let's select this one and now we will plot the results So this is the uh, load deformation plot, as you can see on the right side, uh, it has almost uh, 40 millimeter of displacement at 400 kilonewtons. So we will extract this result in Excel so that we will compare this result with 2D uh, result later. Alright, I have plotted uh, this chart in Excel as you can see where we can see the max ultimate load is around 400 kilonewton and the maximum displacement is on 40 millimeter. In the buckles, we can also check the uh, reinforcement, uh, the shear distribution, I mean stress distribution and reinforcement as well. So we can see the stress distribution here in reinforcement uh, for the given steps. We can see that uh, there is your, uh, the stress distributed from top to bottom and there is a failure of some rebars at the bottom. We can see the rebars at the bottom, it is already crossed its yielding strength of 450 kilo, uh, megapascal. So now uh, let's go into the modeling of 2D approach and we will see uh, the results from the 2D method as well. So this is the 2D modeling where we define the part as a uh, 2D plane element or shell element. We can see here, you can see here it's a thin element which is uh, defined as a strip element which is plane and a shell and we will define the thickness of this uh, strip element. Also, we define the reinforcement as well, which is wire and truss tie. And steel plate, which is also 2D plane element. And it's also defined as a 2D plane element, which is also considered as a strip. And we will define the thickness. So uh, most of the procedure is uh, similar with the 3D 
The only difference is that we will define the thickness of this, uh, this part here. So in the property, uh, here in the property we can, uh, we, the definition of all the properties are same. We define the concrete property which is the uh, same with the 3D uh, definition earlier. We defined the uh, concrete dynamics plasticity elastic properties the compressive behavior properties, tensile behavior properties. Also for the rebars as well, we define elastic properties, plastic properties. Here, when we define the cross section, uh, I'll just delete this one. Here, we uh, define the uh, thickness of the concrete element because we only define the plane plate uh, element which is plain plain surface type and we define the thickness of this element also for the rebars as well we define the total reinforcement area of each rebar so there are three m10 for a uh, cross section of each m10 is 100 so in total we give 300 for total reinforcement area. Also for stir up, we define the cross-sectional area of, uh, of vertical stir ups. Here uh, in the part, stir up is defined as only as a vertical leg. There is no horizontal leg since uh, the vertical leg is uh, the main part of the stir up and it is uh, it has the uh, shear resisting capacity so we only define the vertical leg and in the property we define the total area of this vertical leg which is 64.4 which is actually a uh, uh, total area that is it includes two legs uh, of area and after that when we are when we completed the defining property we assembled our structure as you can see, this is a plane element and it is not a 3D. Here we have assembled our rebars, T-ups, concrete and steel plate as well. Once we define, once we define the assemble, then we define the step. And it is again similar to the 3D modeling. We define our step as a uh, uh, the loading steps. With, um, with the increment size of 0 0.01 and a maximum up to 0.1 and total number of increment is 10,000. And other properties, they are kept default as in 3D. So interaction also here, we have defined coupling, which uh, couples the reference point and the loading surface where load will be applied. Embedment is for the reinforcement and the concrete reason. Then tie loading plate, which is at the top, where concrete is a master slip and loading plate is a surface plate and the, uh, the, the interaction is tie type. Also for the supporting plate as well. You can see here concrete master surface and the supporting plate is a slab surface. So in this way, we have uh, defined the contact between the each part. So now we will define the load, which is again very similar to that of the 3D. We have defined the load in vertical direction. We can edit and check. So this is a vertical displacement in downward direction minus, that's why it's negative. And the loading is applied in a displacement controlled way. And the boundary condition is pin and roller, pin on my left and roller on my right. So in pin we have constrained the uh, displacement in U1 and U2 direction, which is uh, X and uh, Y direction. And for roller, we have constrained the boundary condition in vertical direction.
So once load is defined, we will mesh our structure. And once we mesh, we define the job. So let's go in the job and we define our job. Uh, let's give a name BSA3, which is 2D. Now we run it. So there is uh, the file is aborted, so it means we have some issues. Let's check this uh, this issues. For that, we will go to the monitor, and here in the error, we can see that our 12 elements are missing its property definition. So let's fix this one. For that, uh, we will go in the job and we'll see the results. And here in output database. we will see our uh, error. It says error missing. So we select. It says stirrup has a missing ele uh, element section. So we'll fix this one. So here uh, we define for the stirrup the property. This is a trust type. I guess there was some issue with this one earlier. Okay, done. And then We'll just simply mesh it. And now let's try to run again. And we will run it. Now it's running. We will wait for the result. All right, the run is completed. Now we will see the result. Okay, we can see here the stress distribution with the concrete. We can see here. Also, we can check the stress distribution and the uh, rebars as well. Here we can see how get rebar, uh, the rebars, the stress are distributed. And let's check the load deformation capacity of this uh, beam as well. So here it is the load deformation curve for the 2D beam as well. Let's extract this result in Excel and compare both results in the word chart. All right, I have extracted the results in Excel and this is the experimental result. Now let's uh, see the 2D and 3D results in the same chart. Now here we can see that uh, 3D has uh, higher, uh, almost 12% uh, higher than that of the 2D result. I mean the higher capacity compared, 12% higher capacity compared to uh, 2D results. So it seems that 3D is much stiffer. And also I have uh, extracted the result of the compressive strain, compressive stress versus compressive strain. So from here, uh, by studying this chart, we can see that uh, 3D solid element, which is a uh, 3D model, is uh, more stiffer compared to 2D plane element. So in this case, 2D results, 2D modeling gives uh, slightly lower, which is almost 12% lower than that of the 3D results, and it is it gives a uh, conservative result compared to 3D result. But both results are aligned or quite match quite match with the experimental result. Uh, the differences between these two results is like in 2D we have simplified the assumption of out of plane degree that we didn't consider the out of plane degree of freedom that is in Z direction but in 3D we have considered X, Y, Z direction and 3D solid is uh, comparatively much stiffer compared to 2D plate element. So that is why we can see that 2D uh, result is slightly lower than that of the 3D. So on my left, there is a 2D model result, and on my right, that is 3D model result. And we can see that the failure patterns or yielding of the reinforcements, reinforcement are quite similar in both cases. Uh, Shear reinforcement are started to yield, and also the bottom view bars have also uh, yielded in both cases. So in this way, we can uh, 
say that 2D modeling quite uh, it uh, resembles the 3D modeling and 2D modeling is quite simple compared to 3D modeling because we are uh, we are not considering the out of plane direction and uh, it also serves the time of modeling. Now let's compare the uh, failure pattern of the beam in uh, beam with the shear reinforcement and without shear reinforcement. So here on my left, there is a beam without a shear reinforcement. As we can see, here's only a button rebar. There's a no shear reinforcement. Now let's see the failure patterns uh, between these two types of beam. On my right, there is a beam with a shear reinforcement. And on my left, there is beam with no shear reinforcement. So I have already run this model. And let's see the results. Uh, let's see only the rebars. And now here we can see the yielding of a rebar. Here as we can see that the rebars at the bottom has yielded, but there is no shear reinforcement. On my right, because there is a shear reinforcement, so we can see that some shear reinforcements are yielding in this case. In the uh, uh, concrete beam with uh, no shear reinforcement, let's see the behavior of concrete. Here we can see how stresses are distributed from a loading plate to the support. And we can see the uh, failure crack pattern as well. So here we can see the cracks as formed and later it forms a diagonal tensile formation from a point of load to this support as we can see. And later on the uh, beam falls in a diagonal tensile failure manner whereas in the beam with the shear reinforcement uh, we can see that the failure uh, pattern as Here in the uh, beam with shear reinforcement, we can see that the cracks are form at the bottom and then later on the concrete at the top, you can see here, it started to crushing. Or So here uh, the shear reinforcement as well fails and also the concrete at the top also get crushed. So here it is uh, the shear compression failure and also later on the, there is a yielding of the rebar. So what happens in this beam is there is actually a flexure compression failure in the beam with the shear reinforcement and in the beam without shear reinforcement there is a diagonal tensile failure. As we know in the uh, beam with shear reinforcement we can see there is a failure of the shear reinforcement as well. From here, stress distribution, we can see some uh, most of the most of the shear reinforcements are exceeding its yielding capacity. So uh, that's all for this video. Thank you so much, guys, for uh, staying uh, this far in this video with me, and thank you so much for your attention. And please subscribe our channel for more videos in the future as well. Thank you.